All right, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, the first thing we need to do is approve the agenda. So moved, second. Jill and Curtis moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Curtis and Ryan Ruda. Moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, recognitions. Oh, uh, most important one, need to recognize that this is National School Board uh, Appreciation Month. So I want to uh, take a moment to recognize the uh, good hard work that all you, all you do. Uh, we are people, of, well, people in the room know, but people are, might be listening to this elsewhere. We have an excellent school board, we really do. Uh, very uh, passionate, caring, uh, have the best interest in heart of the all of our kids in our district, and uh, thank you so much. Not all districts can say those words. Yeah, <laughs> I, I talk to my fellow <laughs> superintendents at times. Uh, in the best of times, it's challenging to be a school board member, in the best of times. Uh, but the last 24 months have been legendary. Uh, so heartfelt thanks from me uh, to you for all that you do for us, and just nice, calm, cool, collective group looking to move forward. And I appreciate all, all the support that you provide to the district. So that's my recognition. All right. Thank you. All and right. You have cupcakes. Oh, did you make them? No. Fresh baked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move to financials. Mike. Okay. On the first page of warrants, um, kind of towards the top, I'll just point out Bruckner's truck sales um, is repairs on buses. We had several different repairs come, the, well, the bills come through. The biggest one was to replace the transmission on one of the buses. That was $9,000. So a total of $22,119 to them this month. And then on page two down at the bottom, High Plains Co-op, we had $132,901 flow through from the state to them. And then our portion of, of one of uh, uh, payments of $89,442 this month. So the warrants for this month are $411,880.88. Um, and then our, we're doing okay with our cash balances on page six. And, and page eight, um, we're looking okay with our percentages for the budget year. And then behind that's the transfers and then the high school and middle school reports. No one has any questions for Mike. I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, financials at $411,880.88. So moved. Second it. Ryan Schreibogel and Jill. Moved and seconded it to uh, pay the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, no public patron concern, so we'll move to administrative reports and Dr. Meyer. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a couple, three or four things to talk to you about. Um, since I've, I've been in district, we've been looking more and more and more at data uh, so as to help determine the best way forward to provide services to our students. Uh, and we've become, we've become far more data savvy uh, in the last, in the time that we've been working on this. Uh, so we're to the point now where uh, since the teachers I won't say they crave data, but they understand the importance of it and what we need to do with it. We need to make it more available to them, you know, easier to look at. Uh, and so we took a meeting the other day, a while back, with a Ed Insight is the name of this group. Uh, it's, we created a data <coughs> dashboard for us. So basically it allows uh, us to pull in all the different places that we, that we create data on our students and put them on a, a single screen for a teacher. Uh, and they can look at it at the single student level, a grade level, subject level, the building level, the district level. It's a very dynamic, useful uh, program. And we're talking about pulling things in from PowerSchool, FastBridge, local data that we, that we uh, generate, state assessments, the ACT. I mean, just a plethora of different ways where data is available. And so now, and sometimes you just can't see the forest for the trees because we say, well, go look at the data. Well, now this would be a way to pr provide it to one-stop shopping, if you will. So anyway, we're headed down that path. Uh, it, we'll get it loaded up this semester, uh, and we'll have, have it for three and a half years. I'll be using ESSER three monies 
uh, to take uh, to bring this to us. So that's I'll call it free money, uh, and I do believe it's the next step we need to help with our of what we're trying to do. You know, I, you've heard me talk about our lagging lagging indicators not being um, uh, reflective of the good works taking place. Uh, that's this data I'm talking about, and so. Uh, we'll be able to put it in one spot. It's not going to be a cure-all, but it, it at least is the right tool to put in the hands of the people to be able to use. So that's coming down the pike. That's exciting. Uh, you mentioned ESRA 3 money. Uh, I'm still, we're going to do it. We're going to push, that, push this through. But the KSDE on Thursday told us everybody, told everybody to slow down on working on it. Uh, I, I know I've complained to you guys about this. I've whined to you about this. One of the uh, stipulations, and uh, people listening, <laughs> hopefully the KSDE will hear this as well, because I've voiced my opinion on this multiple times. Uh, part of what we have to do is um, check with our stakeholders, the various stakeholders, on how we go about, how we should go about using the money. I've got no problems with that. That's a good idea. But specifically they talk about we have to reach out to our local tribes and then our local civil rights organizations. We have none of those in our district. They don't exist. You know, we've researched, we've looked. They don't exist. And there's no way to answer the question on, you can't say not applicable. You can't say that. And we have to say how we went about to try to find these groups. And then when we got the response back from the groups, how we decided to utilize the money. There's just all sorts of potential problems with this as far as I'm concerned. Um, one of the last things they talked about was, well, reach out to one of the civil rights organizations from a different community. Well, they're not our stakeholders. You know, where does that end? And so if we reach out to the civil rights organization from, let's say, Garden City, why don't we reach out to one in Liberal, or Hayes, or Salina, or Topeka? I mean, it's, just, it's ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, the KSDE has now discovered that this is a, a, a black eye, and they told us all to slow down on um, getting the application in. Uh, we, I will be pushing it. I planned on working on it this last week, but when they said shut, shut it down, I shut it down, uh, because this will fund summer school. You know, we have half the money left over from ESSER 2, while the other part is coming from ESSER 3, and the positions that we brought in to help with learning loss. So we're going to push forward, and I'll figure a way through this, uh, but it has me a bit chagrined, just a bit. Uh, the calendar committee is getting ready to start up, Mr. Jones. Uh, <laughs> first meeting is set up for Wednesday, January 26th. Uh, two years ago, I think it was, we started working a year ahead on these. So the first meeting is just basically to look at what we already have for next year and just is it still what we want. And we'll work in, uh, in earnest, we'll be doing is working toward the 23 24 school year. And yes, it's still alive. The dream is still alive to go to a balanced schedule, uh, as far as I'm concerned. A balanced schedule, for those not in the know, means year round schooling. Don't throw things at me now if you'd like, but if, if you really start looking into it, it is a good choice. I don't anticipate bringing forward a balanced schedule for board uh, approval anytime soon, <laughs> but if, we don't, if you don't plan it, it'll never grow. Uh, last thing on, on here, I don't want to steal any of um, Randy's her name, Randy's or Lance's thunder, uh, but I know the, the deadline is coming forward on the KDHE grant for the playground. Uh, if you recall, that's the grant that Dina and Lance wrote last year to get the Wiley playground. Now we're looking to do it over here at Holcomb Elementary as well. So that is in the works as we go. Do the I'm sure Randy will talk about it. So with that, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. All right. Buildings. Tom. Uh, we got great news. We broke ground on the FFA barn. They uh, did a, uh, what do you call it, Mr. Hunter's about this barn. Excellent. And then the crew did come down with uh, some kind of sickness, and they've been gone for the last couple of days. So hopefully we'll be here tomorrow because they're going to fill it in with rocks. Start getting the concrete ready. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Lance, grounds. Uh, nothing further. Sam, transportation. Um, just to Once co come to the mic, if you will, Sam. <laughs> we should have made Tom, but I took pity on him. Maybe to answer, clear up the mechanical part of that a little bit. Um, with Bruckner's, I don't know if you guys know, they just started up like 
six months, a year ago. Um, they're good, honest people. They just had a billing issue, and some of those bills were held from May. So that's why instead of getting a bunch of little bills, we got a bunch of big bills, you know, that were still from when we did our inspections. So I don't know if that clears it up, but it is what it is. Thanks, Sam. All right, food service. Okay, technology, Mr. Ackerman. Nothing further. I do want to back up to food service though, because we just did start up. If you read her, uh, Monica's report, uh, first day of offer versus serve at the schools. So, and I've yet really. I'm sure I'll find out in the next couple of days how it's going. But uh, Monica's putting this in, into play for us for a variety of reasons. Uh, it will. I, I. It's returned to what we used to do. Okay, uh, and it will cut the costs. So, uh, it's a good move programmatically and also fiscally. So I'm pleased that Monica took that on and it's not like just falling off a log. There's a lot of uh, details that go into play to make that kind of shift, particularly mid-year. So thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. All right, we'll move to the principals and Mrs. Albright. I'll start up by following up on what Dr. Myers was saying about the food service. We very much appreciate um, them starting that mid-year. Our students are very excited to have scoop and serve option. They're excited about having trays that they dump their trash off of and put it in the window to get it washed. So very exciting things happening. Our students are running with it. Our um, cooks and food service people are working their tails off to make it happen and we appreciate them. So that's very exciting. At Wiley, we're kicking off our project-based learning. We kind of hold off a little bit at our school to kind of get in the routines and procedures of things, um, but things are starting up with that. Kindergarten is going to be working on doing an art gallery. They're gonna be working with um, the Garden City Arts Center, Joel at the high school, and some other local people to talk, come in and talk to the students or take them to learn about different aspects of art, working on their fine motor skills and things like that, to come up with a few different pieces of artwork that they can set up in like an art gallery format and invite their family and community in to come look at that. So that's exciting for them. <coughs> First grade is going to work on designing our school store sign. Two years ago, first grade designed the school store, but we're just getting that running this year due to COVID, and so it's exciting, and our school store needs a sign on it. So they're gonna work with Joel at the high school and the design team to come up with designing that and have a voting system, just kind of like what they did on their T-shirts a few years ago, and have a sign made. Second grade is um, working on Unsung Heroes and our big truck day that we're going to be putting on in April. Um, so the students are going to be learning about all kinds of different professions such as linemen, plumbers, farmers, things like that, that don't get the recognition that like your firefighters or your policemen would, um, that are very important people in our community. Then they will each take on one of those individually to um, kind of research more about. And we're going to invite them in for our career day and they'll bring their tractors or their equipment or things like that. And instead of the adult speaking about their career, the second graders are gonna be the ones who are going to be presenting their careers and talking about it. So we're excited to put that on. It's kind of been something that's been in the works for a few years that got put on hold due to COVID. So we're excited to get that going. Awesome. Real estate agent, car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mrs. Tyne. First of all, I will just second what Amy said about the kids being really excited about being able to scoop their own food. That's, you know, that's the thrill in elementary school is being able to choose your food and being able to say no to that broccoli if you don't want it. So um, that's been... Elementary. What? I said not just an elementary. <laughs> Um, so that's been really exciting for kids. Kids have done a nice job, and like Amy and Dr. Meyer said, we appreciate food service and what they've had to do to get that going and put it together. Every day we have sticky notes above the food so we kids know exactly how much they can take. They don't have to ask, and so it just allows them to be a little bit more independent, uh, and we like that for them. Um, also, as far as the playground grant, that is due on Saturday, um, and 
Lance has been really good to help me out with that and the company that we work with Echo Turf has been off awesome because um, <clears throat> we decided that there's a section of it that we need to leave uncovered because of the Sprinkles. Yes, the irrigation line underneath and sometimes there are things that need worked on. So Lance called them and we had the new um, the new <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Should have let Lance talk about this. <laughs> I can't. I can't even see his mouth moving. It's <laughs> amazing. It's like he's reading your yeah. mind. That's amazing. <laughs> People are hey, not here. Can't see this. It's we're, yep. We're, we got this going. Simpatico. <laughs> um, so had it that day. Had it on Friday. So I have it. All I need to do is plug in our information. They have most of the grant done for us with all the details, and that is very nice because a lot of it I have no idea. <laughs> what they're talking about so um, that's been a pretty smooth process and I hope to get that um, faxed off this week before the deadline um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about is that um, Mrs. Albright and I have been working on looking at our ELA um, what they call a protocol for the different tiers um, of instruction that we provide for students so we've asked our title department to start looking at what are the resources that we have to provide that instruction at tier three um, that are evidence-based? What do we have for tier two? Um, and then usually for tier one, we're looking at um, the district purchased resource, um, but also there are some other things that can go in that area as well. So we're starting some good work with that and it will just pro provide um, some guidelines for teachers to be able to look and see very quickly what is going to be most effective with kids um, as far as providing that ELA instruction. So excited to get that work started. Um, we have a meeting later this month to kind of get together with the title team and um, start working on that. So. Thank you. Are you covering yeah, for yeah, Tyler? Yeah, Mr. Helton's out uh, ill tonight. Uh, the only thing I'll just accentuate off of his report is it's amazing how early we have to start on things like the master schedule and handbook committees and whatnot. And he's got it well under underhand uh, moving forward. Um, that's really it. Okay. I have to say. All right, Jerry. You're up, Jerry. All right. Uh, that's stuff that I wanted to highlight that's not a part of the board report was um, some of the alternate education that we're offering for our students uh, at Holcomb High School. We have six, uh, I think there's six, if not seven, that attend uh, Garden City Community College's auto body program in the afternoons. Um, they've continued on second semester. We have two uh, that are doing the carpentry program at Garden City Community College in the afternoon. Uh, something we started up this second semester is our work-based learning. We have six seniors uh, currently that are um, leaving school sixth hour and picking up um, two, two hours of elective classes at Holcomb High School uh, where they go and they're working at different jobs. We have uh, one person that is um, working for the Dance Academy, uh, Sign Source, Tyson, Cornerstone Church, JR Audio, American Canvas, and Trailer Service. Um, or some of the different jobs that we have students out there doing. Um, so um, it, they're actually picking up high school credit for participating in these jobs the second half of the day, which is uh, really kind of cool uh, that we have kids out there um, getting into the work field. And uh, a lot of those kids, they have to put in a minimum of 10 hours a week, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of springboarding them because most of them have those, stay with those jobs well after um, the school day's done. So it, it's, you know, when we're talking about uh, post-secondary success and we're talking about time management and how to do things the right way, uh, these kids are getting a jump, uh, a head jump onto it. So uh, second alternate education uh, talk about is we're continuing on with our process of our virtual school. Uh, we filled out the um, intent to have a virtual school. So uh, the deadline, we just got word back yesterday that the deadline's not till the 12th of February. Uh, and after that, every school in Kansas that has an intent to have a virtual school, they'll put out more information for us of, you know, what, what's, what's our next steps in order to do that. Um, we had two more students at semester um, that applied for virtual school over at Garden City. Um, that this is a continuing trend that we're starting to see more and more that um, 
the way school looks isn't the way that they necessarily want it to look. And so if we can provide our own, maybe we can keep some of our own kids here at Holcomb through a different different platform. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Move to unfinished business and KASB policy recommendations. Yeah, and this is uh, just the first read. Um, twice a year, the Kansas, Kansas Association of School Boards puts out uh, proposed, recommended rather, uh, updates to the policy book and or f the forms. This time around, there's six uh, potential adjustments if the board ultimately uh, uh, accepts them and one form adjustment. Uh, there's nothing in here that's magnanimous as far as I'm concerned, uh, but I gave you a shorter synopsis of each one. One deals with uh, purchasing, basically saying employees are not allowed to buy, uh, buy stuff from our vendors. Uh, added, the uh, second one is uh, added in the Department of Children and Family Crisis Helpline and mobile response to our child abuse reporting information. No brainer as far as I'm concerned. Next one's a pretty, now this one is a big one. Uh, it gives the uh, board the freedom to give credit for work based experience and clarifies the test out policy that uh, how we go about doing that. Uh, giving credit for work based experience is something I'm extremely, I'm very interested in figuring that out at some point. I don't see why we can't get a, a kid English credit for working at McDonald's. There's, I don't see why we don't do it. Uh, we just have to, it just has to be tied to the standards. And the work that we're doing, with you know that Jerry's leading with the standards-based grading or curriculum work and then also this virtual school idea is headed down that path so this would give us even more freedoms to provide those credits if we wanted to uh, to echo what Jerry did say uh, the, the student not all not all at all but the growing percentage of students uh, expectation of what they think school is is changing uh, I think it has to do with uh, our digital nature uh, just the uh, focus on the getting to the next stages in life. Uh, for my own three kids, uh, if, if it, the option had been available, my, my second child would have been gone. You know, he, he was not involved in school stuff. My daughter, my youngest son, no way at, at all were they leaving school. You know, they're going to stay at school because they wanted to be involved in the stuff that takes place. My middle one, you know, he just, you know, after he quit playing football, he wasn't, wasn't interested in doing much of anything else, you'd really go out into the, the world of work. Uh, where we were at that moment, we didn't have that opportunity. So uh, just, it's not, it's not one size fits all, but it's another opportunity for, for kids. Uh, foster students, adding the DCF information into that portion of our handbook. If you ever took the time to read the policy book, it reiterates itself multiple times throughout. It's really interesting how that, it does that. Uh, the next one's the dress code. Uh, they felt the need to protect uh, I mean, already students can, as long as it's not upsetting to the educational environment, uh, have freedoms to wear certain things. And it's adding in specifically that it's okay to wear tra traditional tribal regalia or objects of cultural significance, specifically at graduation. Uh, last policy uh, adjustment is just adds the phrase personal property to items that take approval for someone to use. So think like the tractor or something like that. Uh, we have to, if somebody wants to borrow it, has to go through a process <coughs> to do that. Uh, single form adjustment down at the bottom is if anyone has a uh, challenge against a, a resource of ours, it, rather than coming to the board, it's supposed to follow the chain of command, go to the principal, go to the superintendent, still not resolved, then you come to the board. So it's what in my short time here, that's what we've done, but now it institutionalizes it. It puts it into, into print. So anyway, this is the first reading. The only I, I would ask is an action to approve of the first reading. I'll make a motion to approve the first reading. Second. Casey and Curtis moved and seconded to approve the first reading of the KASB proposal policy proposal adjustments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, capital outlay projects. Okay, it's just uh, no action on this, but it's an opportunity for us to continue to talk about, well, what, what do we do next? Where are we going next? Um, the farm project, like Tom alluded to, is it's underway. It's going. We now have all the, all the permits we're supposed to have, getting ready to have the services uh, delivered. Uh, that'll come up later in the meeting. Uh, they're actually moving dirt around. Uh, so, and the building itself has been ordered. Uh, so it's, it's headed down the path. 
on time at this point. I met with them last week in the uh, in Topeka, and they, they plan on you know doing the punch list by before July 31st, which is the deadline that you know we'd originally put together. With. So that's that's all good. Randy mentioned the uh, HES playground, the work that's taking place on that. Uh, just because we're doing the grant doesn't mean we have to accept the grant. So it's not like we're locked in if we are awarded the grant, but it is an another piece of work that we're interested in, in pursuing. Something that uh, I just kind of keep putting it off uh, is the main gem bleachers need to be, uh, at some point in time, redone, basically. And if I remember correctly, that was in like $300,000 range, Tom. Yeah, it's, it's not free. Uh, it's not broken yet, but it's one of those... Could. Close, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Next item is also in that, in that, in that realm. Uh, the, the track uh, at some point it needs to be redone. Uh, we continue to patch it, uh, but you know, it, water is not our friend. And when it comes to that that kind of thing, if it's a little bit of crack, water gets in. Of course, it freezes and it starts to heave and whatnot. I mean, it's still a usable track. I mean, it's fine. But it does need to be replaced. I don't have a dollar amount for you on that one, except for it's not free, you know, to do a track. Uh, item that we've really been working on the most in the last month is the concession stand, restroom, ticket booth, CTE building. You know, the building trades bill. I've, I've taken two different meetings with two different design build groups. One is Mammoth. The other one is a group out of uh, Wichita, uh, and they are working up very, very rough estimates. Uh, this, if you'll recall, I, I, I believe the biggest ice store in the, in the district is our uh, football restroom slash concession stand area, but I have a hard time getting excited spending, you know, $200,000 on something like that, unless we can tie it to something academic. And we came up with that idea of, well, what if we did a building trades program? And so, and that's the, the if you remember last month, we talked about, you know, Ryan and I have gone over and um, proposed to the state spark people, and I've not heard anything back yet, Ryan, but uh, I, I made a $650,000 ask, you know, said, you know, this, because this is, we'd like to do this. Will we get the money? I don't know, but then we won't get the money if we don't ask for it. So the cool thing about this particular project is if it hits and it takes hold and it builds on, you know, what we're currently doing with kids going over for carpentry and whatnot, is it will help fund itself because these students create extra waiting, you know, CTE waiting is 0.5 funding. Uh, so yeah, it would take a while to make up $800,000? Yes, but it would, it makes up over time. Mm -hmm. It does bring revenue to the, to the district. So, and last thing on here is uh, we're getting to the point where it might be nice to have a 10 year master plan, you know, for capital outlay. We just might have kind of been doing the things that we thought needed to be done. Well, and last year, if you recall, we brought this list back and forth several times and finally started chipping away at it. Something that's not on here is I'm still interested in doing something for the uh, morning traffic flow, if you will. I know the city's doing something, which is good. That should help. Uh, but I, you know, Tom and uh, Sam and I kind of honed in on the best thing that we could do to help with the traffic flow is the road right here. We put in a road, punch it over to uh, Main Street. Uh, we've not looked at permits, any of that stuff. We, we have some estimates on what, what it would cost. It's really not all that expensive. Frankly, when you start talking about capital outlay, but that's not, I didn't, just didn't have to put it on the list. So, and you might have things in your brain that you might want to have it added to our capital outlay projections, projects. You know, one thing I was just looking here for an email, but one thing on the uh, track that we might consider, and I know we've, we've done this at the college and with Mammoth being out here already, <clears throat> the high school is going to be replacing their turf and track. We're piggybacking on their project for Come some up. cost savings at the college. Uh, so we're going to redo our, our <coughs> turf and track. Garden City, high school is. <clears throat> Garden City High School is. So track? while they're just resurfacing it, uh -huh. <clears throat> but while Mammoth is out here, there might be some cost savings to at least explore and see while they're out here this summer doing two other tracks in this area right well and, th and th then that leads us down that conversation of the turf i personally am not in favor of a turf uh, project i'll just we'll throw it out there i think we can use our money in lots of other better ways but i do know that um, there is a certain amount of public interest in that now track 
Yes. Uh, but to turf the football field is, I, I personally am not a big fan of that. But Just do a loose porch. Mm. <laughs> That's what we'll do. Yeah, I mean, the mm, track resurfaced just kind of estimate if it was able to be resurfaced. I don't think it's going to be able to be It's going to have to be a replacement. <laughs> So you're probably looking closer to 450 to 500 thousand, probably. Yeah, and see, and, that, and that's why people say if you're going to do that, <laughs> you might, and if you're going to do the turf at some point, tear the whole thing all, all up at once. But like Matt was saying, I personally would not want to be uh, involved in a lease purchase, a 10-year lease purchase for a million-dollar project. But that's what some people do. And then you got to turn around and do it again. Well, before yeah. you got to pay it off. <laughs> So let me make it real clear to anybody listening out there, <laughs> I'm not interested in <laughs> signing a note for a 10-year lease purchase on a million-dollar project. Not interested in doing that. Thank God. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, because then we had the track looked at, though, and it wasn't. Ours is beyond. Down. Beyond repair. Yeah, it's crumbling underneath. It's crumbling underneath. Yeah. 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 And we won't build it home. what I would say, too, if I was a contractor. That would be <laughs> <laughs> well, you would know your dad is, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wipe it. All right. Let's move to new business and uh, the resolution in, for election of president and vice president and setting of meetings. And you have, you have two options. We, have, we need to do uh, pass a resolution on both these items. One is on the election and one is on the setting of the dates. Uh, and you have them in your packet. Two different uh, options. The this happened about, I don't know, four years ago or something like that, uh, where it changed over to where every January, uh, the idea of, of new board members coming on that you redo these things. But they give us the option of keeping it at a different date or a different time. I personally have no interest in upsetting the apple cart and having a running election tonight. I recommend to you that you uh, act on the resolution. The second one, on the first piece of paper, the second box, which says at its first meeting of the Board of Education in July of 2022, I added in the word July in 2022, or some other month. Uh, just So say we're going to do the election in July like we normally do. And then I would say I would also recommend as a separate motion that the resolution for setting the board meetings also take place in July. There's I don't see any reason to change things midstream. So unless there's a real groundswell Somebody wants to take over the presidency. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Joe. Yeah, no I make that motion. Okay. <laughs> so, Sean. To push it to July. Yeah. Second. Sean and Ryan Ruda. Been moved and seconded to push the resolution for. <coughs> Setting the meetings and board and uh, president and vice president till July. Could you do those two as two separate? Can we words? do two. Yeah. All right. So the first one we will do is we're going to move our election of president and vice president to till July, the board meeting July 2022. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Now I need a motion and a second to set the meetings then as well correct correct i'll make the motion to set the meeting dates in july okay. second it casey and jill moved and seconded to move the setting of the meetings to july 2022 all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed all right donations uh, in your packet i wrote this up incorrectly it's my my mistake uh we have a two thousand dollar donation coming to the middle school wrestling program uh from lewis and T lewis toyota of garden city uh, i was i misunderstood i thought it came from the kansas city toyota dealer association i guess they, they're part of the paper flow but the actual uh grant is coming locally and we have danielle hartman to thank for this i appreciate it um so i would recommend the board accept the uh, donation of two thousand dollars for the middle school wrestling program i'll make the motion to accept the two thousand dollars for the middle school wrestling program casey and sean <coughs> moved and seconded to accept the two thousand dollar donation from lewis motors of garden city for our middle school wrestling program lewis Toyota. i'm sorry lewis toy what did i say just lewis motors yes. okay lewis toyota Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to reiterate, Lewis Toyota. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. All right, let's move to the electrical service agreement. Okay, this is just a part of you know the, the project. Uh, in order to have electricity out there, uh, we need to take action. The board needs to take action rather uh, to accept the service agreement from Wheatland Electric. I'm sure you, I don't know if you read it or not, but basically it says it's going to happen for five years and then uh, details of it. But it's standard agreement. Curtis, anything you want to add to it? Basically, you sign a five-year service agreement to have a service there, and we put the line in and put the service in at basically no cost, other than you guys have to give us a trench from point A to point B to get the, <coughs> get the power from over there from the north side of the Freeman Addition, but uh, just a standard five-year service agreement like we have on every service. And if we chose not to do this, who would you buy our electricity from anyway? Generators. Put a big old solar system in out there. <laughs> Wind generator. So as much as it chagrins me to support this because it's courtesy. Now, I, I recommend uh, that you uh, accept the service agreement with Wheatland Electric. Now, I'll make that motion that we accept that service okay. agreement. Jill. Second. Ryan Ruda. Moved and seconded to accept the service agreement with Wheatland Electric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Electric service easements. Yep. We have two uh, requested easements. Uh, one is to provide um, opportunities for Wheatland to go out and, ooh, and service the barn area. Uh, so that's one of the easement uh, right away uh, requests. And the other one is over here just to the north of the bus barn, allowing access to the uh, housing addition that's being done over this way. Uh, both these are, as far as I'm concerned, no-brainers. They positively impact uh, the district. So anything else you want to add on that one? So basically, the easement up here is to get it's the cable route from where, where the power is now to where it needs to be. It just gives us an easement for our power line to lay in. And then the other one is over here. Basically, the east and north five foot of the of the rec property and the bus barn property there's going to be hopefully a large housing subdivision go in over there and if if that doesn't go in then the, we won't we won't use the easement but hopefully it does yep yeah so I, I recommend that the board accept both those easement requests so moved. second it Sean and Jill Moved and seconded to approve the both easement requests from Wheatland Electric. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Let's see. We're it was 20, but I think 15 is fine. Okay. Personally. All right. Let's see what time is it. What if, we, what if we go into executive session for 15 minutes at 645? And w to include Dr. Myers, and that's it. I will make that motion, Matt. Thank you, Ryan Schreibogel. Second it. And Jill. Moved and seconded to go into executive session at 645 for 15 minutes to include Dr. Myers. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right.
interesting. All right. Okay, we are back in session. I need a motion to hire Antonio Reyes Rodriguez as a full-time custodian. So moved. Second it. Ryan Ruda and Jill. Moved and seconded to hire Antonio. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, I need a motion to hire Manuel Avia Ortiz as a full-time custodian. So moved. Ryan Shrivogel. Second. Ryan Ruda. Moved and seconded to hire Ma Manuel. Okay, back clear. Okay. All those in all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I need a motion to approve the supplementals as presented. So moved. Curtis. Second it. Jill. Moved and seconded to approve the supplementals as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Need a motion to give Dr. Myers a 7% salary increase. Starting next year. Starting, Starting next year. So moved. Ryan Shrivogel. Second. Ryan Ruda. Moved and seconded to give Dr. Myers a 7% salary increase starting next year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's it. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Jill. Second. Ryan Ruda. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Did I set a record? No. Dang it. If we had started. No nonsense. Uh, don't you dare. Do you have a shredder? I do. I can happy to shred them. I can take them there if you want. I can do it. It doesn't matter. Or you can, I don't mind if you don't. I mean, they just got wet or something, so I'm like, they need to go bro. I don't know how that. Oh, sorry. That was my fault. Yeah, I'll have to go talk to her. Yeah. She has a shredder. I don't. Oh, hey, Matt, I got this for you. Whiskey? No, no. I said, what? No, I don't. A bottle Yeah, I bought it with a school. <laughs> The girls don't want to sell it. I'm like, it isn't the girls, it's you that doesn't want to sell it. They don't care anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three of those. They don't so. care. 